We had the pleasure of watching two Monday night games tonight. We saw the Jaguars and Bills, Bengals and Commanders. A lot of storylines went down tonight. A lot of things happened for fantasy football. We're going to look at what happened. We're going to look at the box score. We're going to look at this from a fantasy football lens. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now. We're going to go hot and heavy on the waiver wire tomorrow. Those videos will be out early in the morning. On top of that, we will be deep diving the trending players this week with the You Need series. And then we'll use these videos to help you set your lineups. Click that button. Stop missing out. Plus, we'll be doing these recaps this season because we started doing it this year. But the Jacksonville Jaguars, they got road dogged. They got road dogged by the Bills. And we were not expecting a road dogging. But it happened. Josh Allen, 263 yards and four touchdowns. Starting off the game hot, too. The Bills started off hot, and the Jaguars were cold. And Trevor Lawrence was not looking good. He was awful, and it really killed this whole team. And also the game script, because you were not getting the game to fire on both sides. And like I said in the preview, you really needed the Jaguars to push the game script to get more out of these fantasy football players for your matchups. They didn't do so. But we were able to get a little something, something. Going to the run game of the Bills, James Cook, 39 rushing yards. Not great, but he got that touchdown. Ray Davis got in there, scored a touchdown as well. A guy to look up off waivers as a stash because James Cook is getting volume this year. He's getting opportunity because he also caught four balls from 48 yards. Shakir is becoming the mainstay in the passing offense, as he should be. He is the incumbent. He is the veteran. Six catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. So once they have to shoot it out, he's probably going to get more volume. Keon Coleman was a huge story in this matchup. Starting off in the game, he was nowhere to be found. We were wondering what's going on. Then he just comes out, catches a touchdown real quick, goes right back out, in and out of the offense. Keon Coleman... This is something to expect from him. Expect the ramp up. He's going to be in there making some plays. He does have a good catch radius. He can get downfield. He's going to get those deep targets. But it's going to be in and out. He's a little bit rough around the edges. It's something to expect. He is a stash play kind of more in deeper leagues. But right now you're probably more fluid due to injuries, bye weeks coming up, and everything else. And again, I don't recommend stashing wide receivers. I recommend stashing running backs if you're going to stash backups or guys who are getting limited playing time. Maybe more like a Ray Davis than a Keon Coleman due to the nature of the running back position. And then looking at everything else, Dalton Kincaid, five targets, three balls caught, 41 yards, and he got that touchdown helping you out in fantasy football. Ty Johnson got a touchdown as well. And when we're talking about Ray Davis, you also got to talk about Ty Johnson. No one really talks about him, but he's got speed to burn. If something happens, he's probably going to get some workload if James Cooks goes down. Travis Etienne of the Jaguars, 11 carries, 68 yards. It wasn't happening. The Bills have been stifling running backs. That's what they've been doing. That's what we said in the pregame earlier today, and that's what they did. Tank Bigsby made an appearance after that shoulder injury. Christian Kirk had his game. We did say that it could be a Christian Kirk game since the Bills allowed Greg Dortch in week one to rack up a lot of catches. Brian Thomas Jr. got some deep balls. Five catches, 48 yards, 9.6 yards per catch. He got some work, but not enough to be productive and fancy. Nine targets is good to look at, though. That's great for the spreadsheet. Gabe Davis got a little bit of work, but nothing to count on. Parker Washington was in there. Brenton Strange, a lot of people start him. He, he scored a touchdown and got five targets. That's really good enough for a tight end. He's probably got a tight end one week to his name. That's very solid for him. Two catches, 12 yards. Not super sexy, but good enough to get the job done. And the fact that he got five targets means he got a lot of work in the passing game considering Jacksonville was trailing. And he got the lone touchdown over everybody else. All in all, the main storylines here is the Jaguars getting road dog. Trevor Lawrence really not living up to it. Mac Jones coming in for a little bit. Josh Allen looking solid. Bills road dogging. We got Keon Coleman getting a little bit of work. Khalil Shakir is the guy for the long term. Dalton Kincaid, five targets. Brenton Strange, five targets. Now we're looking at the Bengals and the Washington Commanders. And this was a shootout. And the Washington Commanders got up early. And nobody was projecting that. The projections and what was Vegas saying was Bengals were going to be up. And they're going to have a sizable lead on the Commanders. And they were going to be able to throw the ball. They were able to throw the ball. 
but the defense gave up points. Jaden Daniels looking good for a rookie, throwing deep bombs, getting it done on the ground, looking solid. Austin Eckler left with an injury. Three carries, 35 yards, and touchdown. Brian Robinson got a touchdown as well. Terry McLaurin was the story because he finally scored some fantasy points. He finally got that touchdown after that drought over the last few weeks. But Terry McLaurin's got speed to burn. Those deep balls can go his way. It might be up and down this season. He is working with a rookie quarterback. So we might have some fluidity there. Luke McCaffrey got three targets. Zach Ertz got five targets. So he scored about eight fantasy points. Noah Brown got a little work. Austin Eckler good in the passing game just with a few targets though. And then you're going over to the Bengals. Jamar Chase did Jamar Chase things. Caught six of his seven targets. 118 yards and two touchdowns. Yoshi got another touchdown. T. Higgins, a lot of you guys started him. He did see six targets. He did get some workload. He did get some opportunity. He was out there for a lot of routes. Mike Gusecki got some work. Scored about 8.7 PPR fantasy points. Not crazy, but the rookie Eric All was in there getting some volume, catching four balls for 22 yards. A rookie to pay attention to. In redraft, you're just watching from afar. Dynasty, your ears are perking up to Eric All. That's two weeks in a row. He's showing a sign of life here. Chase Brown, two catches seven yards you're looking at the rushing attempts here 12 for moss seven for brown brown popped one 8.9 yards per carry 62 yards zach moss 12 carries 58 joe burrow 324 yards three touchdowns the Bengals defense was just a gaping hole and Jaden daniels was running through it but Jaden daniels looked good that was the big story of this matchup him connecting downfield with those deep targets moving the chains Bengals trying to play catch up in the middle of the back end of the game they could not get it done the commanders with the surprise win they're two and one and they went 38 to 33 that's what happened tonight let me know what happened in your fantasy matchups below the waiver wire videos will be out soon look out for that hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those and i'll catch you on the next video